Hello, my name's Cole, and today I'll be showing you how to catch, clean, and fillet northern pufferfish. These guys are a blast to catch, and they are incredibly tasty. So the first step is to just take your line and tie a loop at the end. Just like so, and this is where you're going to put your weight. You'll just bring it through and put the weight on. And then, about 6 inches up from that, you're going to tie a dropper loop, and that is where you're going to put your hook. So for the dropper loop, you want to make sure that you have a bit of a tail, because you want that tail out there a little bit away from your line. And what I like to do is I like to do at least five or six turns, or else I notice that my loop starts slowly bringing back and having less and less of a tail, which I don't want. And normally I would use my teeth to hold the loop while I tighten the line, but I couldn't do it because of the camera. So I'm just going to speed that portion up for you. And yeah, that's all there is to the line. It's incredibly easy to tie and very successful in my experience. And then one last thing, you're just going to want to cut the tail off the loop that you tied first, and then you're ready to go. Now I like to use clamp for bait, and what I do is I just hook it once. And then I hook so it twice, and I think clam is good because it's very smelly, and the pufferfish love it. So now let's get into actually catching the pufferfish. So as you can see, I'm fishing from a dock, and what I like to do is I just throw it out a little bit away from the dock, because these pufferfish really like structure. It's very simple, and you just, you'll feel little taps on your line, and then you just want to pull up enough just so you can hook them. I like to use number four hooks because they're small and very easy to uh, catch the pufferfish with without ripping it out of their mouth or them just biting the bait off because they are notorious bait stealers. So here you can see some footage of me and my little brother catching pufferfish and we kept at the end of the day around 11 but we caught many more. What we like to do is we measure them against an iPhone and if they are bigger than the iPhone we keep them and if not we'll throw them back. Now, at least from the spot that we're normally fishing at, we usually catch a lot of bycatches. A good amount of sea bass, and every once in a while, we will catch a mudslinger, which you'll see later in the video. And for these guys, we just throw them back because they're, they're too small to do anything with. They're very tasty once they get bigger, but not right now. One of the reasons I love pufferfish, they're just so fun to catch. They make funny noises, and I actually hooked this guy by the tail. I have never seen this before. It's the first time I've ever done that. But they're just very fun to catch. They're plentiful, they're delicious, and they make funny noises, and they look funny. Now, in my experience, if you hit upon a place where pufferfish or other fish like sea bass are living, it does not take very long for them to bite. As you can see here, I throw it in and I start getting bites, and then very quickly I end up catching a pufferfish. And this has been my experience almost every time I've been pufferfishing off this dock. As you can see, me and my brother both caught a fish within almost a second of each other. Now what I'd highly suggest doing is bringing a cooler full of ice because we tried to shortcut it a couple times where we brought a bucket full of water, salt water, just to keep them in. And it works, but you get definitely way more time fishing when you get to keep more fish with a small cooler. Now as you can see, these aren't big fish, so I like to use a very lightweight rod and a very lightweight reel. My reel here is, weight, is uh, rated for 8 pounds, and it works perfectly because they, when you feel those taps, those are what you want to feel so you can hook them, and you, can, you, just, you just can't feel them on a bigger rod. So these lightweight rods are perfect, and they don't have to be expensive. The rod I, I'm using right now, I found at a yard sale for $3, rod and reel, and the rod that my brother is using, we just found on the side of the road. It, you really don't need to get fancy with it. This catch here is actually the first time I'd ever caught a mudslinger. Um, I don't know if you can actually do anything with them, but they are 
They're funny looking, and I enjoy catching them. If you want to make if you want to make yourself laugh, make your friends laugh, whoever you're out with, a great way to make them puff up if they don't puff up automatically when you reel them up is you just tickle their belly and they'll get real big and it's very it's funny. It's funny. They make funny sounds too because of the air coming out of their mouths. Just some bycatch of a sea bass that we caught in there. Just going to unhook them and throw them back. Now this guy was the biggest catch of the day. I was very happy when I caught him because um, it was definitely one of the bigger puffer fish I've caught. And uh, he's he was a big boy. He was delicious. And um, yeah, so then now I'm just going to show you a picture of what he looked like. And then these are the catch that we had today. Those were all the keepers. And then just is what they look like puffed up. So there's two ways that you can do this. The first way, which I'm going to show you now, is you just cut off the head to start. And just uh, separate the head from the body. Throw it out. And then you just basically turn it inside out. Grab the meat, which I'm going to speed up here because it's a bit of a process. Just grab the meat, pull it out. And then you'll uh, it'll separate the guts from it. And then you just pull with a uh, towel or something because they're kind of slippery and then you just have this nice nice chunk of meat there they do have a good amount of meat and you just you leave the front bone in and you just eat around it like almost like a chicken wing and the second way is you cut their skin from the top and then you go inside like towards the tail you cut the uh skin under the dorsal fin too and then you basically what you're gonna do which i'll show you in a second they have very tough skin, so that's why it's just taking a minute. Is, yeah, you're just going to get your hands inside of there and just basically just rip it open. Get your hands inside, like so. Rip it open, get your hands in, use the knife if you need, cut it open. And then you essentially just turn it inside out, which you'll see in one second. Yep, see, their skin just comes off. It's a bit rough and a bit hard to get off, but once you once you start, it's not that bad. And then you just basically turn it inside out and get the meat off. Just like so. I like to keep the tail on. Some people like to eat them when you fry them. Um, I don't, but I still like to keep the tail on. I think it adds a little pizzazz to the meal. And then with this, you'll still have the cavity. You'll, it's almost like a half pipe, you'll see. And you just want to cut off those side pieces of meat because they don't do much for you and they're not very tasty, in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing right there. I'm just cutting off the side pieces so there's no canal and it's just a flat piece of puffer fish. And then that is it. That's all you need to do. And these guys are amazing table fare. You need to catch a good amount for a full dinner. But I... My family enjoyed them as a, almost like an appetizer before our dinner.